Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm finally doing my entire designer handbag collection. It has been requested time and time again and I just haven't had the time to pull out all of my handbags and put this video together. But I thought I can't put it off forever and I really wanted to film it. So today is the day I'm gonna be showing you all of my handbags. Over the years I have collected quite a few number of handbags. So at the moment, to be honest, I've got a little bit too many handbags for my liking. So I was thinking I do want to consolidate my collection a little bit. I'm not thinking a drastic change, but if there are handbags that I'm not getting that much use out of, I'm thinking maybe I should let them go. But first, I need to look at my whole collection and work out which ones I'm using and which ones I'm not really reaching for. So I thought doing this video might be helpful for me as much as, you know, it is a requested video. So hopefully you guys will enjoy the video as well. So I am going to go in the order of most used to least used handbags. And I'm probably not going to go into too much detail on any of these handbags because we don't want to be sitting here forever. So if you do want to know a little bit more about any of these handbags, I have done some reviews on some of these handbags and I do have dedicated collection videos for Louis Vuitton bags and Chanel bags so I'm going to leave a link to those videos down below and if you are new here on my channel and this is the very first video of mine that you're watching welcome I am so glad you're here my name is Isabel and I do videos on luxury and fashion so if you do enjoy these types of videos I'd love it if you consider subscribing to my channel and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up so without further ado, let's get started. So starting off with my very most used handbag. It is my Louis Vuitton Neo Noé bag in the monogram canvas with the black leather trim. It is my everyday bag. I've done a whole dedicated video on this bag. So those of you who watched it know how much I absolutely enjoy this bag. It is a very carefree bag because it's got the coated canvas and the treated black leather. So you don't have to worry about staining or watermarks. It's just so easy to take around. It is really lightweight and it can fit quite a bit inside. The other thing that I love about this bag is that it is not as common, I'd say. So as far as Louis Vuitton goes, you see a lot of Neverfulls and Speedies, and although those bags are really useful and practical and they look really nice, sometimes seeing them everywhere on a lot of people kind of put you off using it. So I love this bag for that reason that it is not as commonly seen. It is getting more popular, but I say you don't see this nearly as much as you see Neverfulls and Speedies on the street so absolute favorite of mine coming in at number two is my chanel square mini in the lambskin quilted leather with the light gold hardware this little number is my absolute favorite go-to bag when i'm not carrying too much with me it does fit my bare minimum essentials that i need to carry on a daily basis considering it's tiny little size and it is one of the most versatile bags in my collection it looks really cute with really casual outfits so when i wear jeans and a t-shirt it looks just as nice as if i dressed it up in the evening the light gold hardware also adds to the versatility because it's not such a yellow gold that of course it goes with with gold jewelry but it doesn't clash too much if you wear it with a silver tone jewelry as you can see against my top here and it looks absolutely amazing with rose gold as well so this is definitely a good investment when you think cost per wear i've gotten so much use out of it the other thing that i wanted to mention is the lambskin a lot of people are scared of using a lambskin bag because they think that it is so fragile and it'll scuff up and scratch up really easily i've had this bag for almost four years now and as you can see it is wearing really well so i say if you are considering a lambskin bag especially in a small size don't worry about it if you love it just go for it because because it does wear much better than what a lot of people think. Coming in at number three is my Givenchy Antigona bag in the smooth black leather with light gold hardware in the size small. Mine is an older model, so if you are looking to purchase one at the moment, the newer models have a longer strap drop with um, detachable straps. These ones aren't detachable, and the newer models only come with the silver hardware with the black leather so i'm not sure whether they do um, gold hardware anymore but anyway i bought this about five years ago in hong kong on my first trip to hong kong that is when australia didn't have a jivanji storm anyway so when i saw it i fell in love with it i went with the smooth leather because it has the nice lovely sheen to it i did think about purchasing the pebbled leather because i thought it would be more durable and more resistant to scratches but in the end i just went for the one that i love the look of the most 
and I'm so glad I did because I use this bag so much. If you follow me on Instagram, you guys know how much I wear this bag. And what I love about this bag is that it is one of those trendy edgy bags in my collection. The majority of my handbag collection is a more classic style. So I'd say this is not crazy trendy looking, but this is on the trendy side in my collection. So I love that it makes me feel really chic and edgy when I carry this bag. So another great daily bag. Coming in at number four is actually my newest handbag purchase and it is the Loewe puzzle bag in the size small in the tan color. I was thinking about where I should rank this bag and because I only had it for about six weeks I thought it's a little bit tricky to rank it but I ended up deciding to put this at number four because of how much I've been using it. I bought this bag here in Sydney just before my Korea trip and it was such a good travel bag. I did an update on this handbag so I'm not going to talk about it too much but pretty much I was looking for a perfect tan color bag that was understated and I'm so glad I decided on this. I was really looking for a tan bag because I wanted to find a bag that would go with my Hermes Oran sandals and Legend sandals that have this exact brown color. It is really comfortable to wear. It is really soft. It fits more than you think and as you guys know I've been loving the understated designer items without the huge logos so I've been absolutely loving this handbag. Coming in at number five is my Louis Vuitton Neverfull bag in the Demier Ebin print in the size MM. This is my work bag on those days that I need to carry a lot of things with me. It fits a laptop, it fits my lunch, it fits all my daily essentials really easily. So it is pretty much a large black hole and I absolutely love that pochette that comes with the bag. This bag is just super durable and I think this bag in the Demia Abin print is just so chic. I absolutely just love the color. I think this is my favorite print in the Neverfull bag. I also use this for traveling all the time as carry-on luggage so an absolute favorite durable and functional tote bag that I just love using for work and travel. Coming in at number six is another Chanel mini bag but this time is in the black caviar leather with silver hardware and the chevron quilting. I only have three handbags in my collection with silver hardware so when I need a bag with silver hardware this is really handy. I just think that the black with the silver combination is just so fresh and being a black caviar handbag it is really carefree. I bought this bag just before I bought the lambskin square mini that I showed you at number two and I can't remember exactly what season this bag belonged to but I just fell in love with the quality of caviar on this particular piece from this particular season. If you can see caviar grains are really small and it is really shiny. It's got a nice sheen to it because I'm not the biggest fan of really large grains of caviar and I do prefer a little bit of a shine to my caviar leather. So I don't really like the really shiny caviar leather, but this is just the perfect amount of sheen. And I do tend to use this bag a little bit more casually. So I'd say this is my go-to weekend bag and it has done me so well over the last few years. Coming in at number seven is my Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM size, this time in the Demia Azure print. I added this bag to my collection about six months ago now. Wow, time flies. I did an unboxing of this bag on my channel soon after I started my channel. And at the time we were in spring going into summer here in Australia. And because of how much I used my Demia Ebin Neverfull, I thought it would be absolutely amazing to have the lighter color version. And I ended up going with the pink rose ballerine interior which is always what I wanted. There's just something about pink with the Demia Azure print that just goes so well and again it comes with that little pochette. So I'd use this bag pretty much the same way I use the other Neverfull in the Demia Abin but when the outfit warrants this color or um, more in the warmer months. But I can really see myself using this in winter as well because I do love my winter whites and sometimes it can be a really fresh pop of color to my winter outfit. So we'll see, this will be my first winter season with this bag. I am very happy with how the patina is going on the Vachetta leather straps. It is pretty even and I love this bag even more now with a bit of patina because I am not a huge fan of that really pale new Vachetta leather so in love with this bag even more now. Coming in at number eight is another white bag and it is my Gucci mini Mamont camera bag. 
I've done a whole dedicated video on this bag as well. I got this bag about two years ago and I got it off Gucci website. I'm not sure whether they actually make the white in the mini size anymore. I believe it only comes in the small size now, but the mini size is my favorite in the Gucci camera bags because it's a little bit more square. It's not as long. I just absolutely love the Gucci Mamont line, but I didn't want to invest too much money into possibly a trendy item. So I did look at a few different Mamont bags, but the flap style bags were a lot more expensive. They were all around the 2000 Australian dollar mark. Whereas this one, when I purchased it was ted over a thousand Australian dollars. So I thought that was a reasonable price. So if I got enough wear out of it during the first, you know, couple of years of this bag being in style, then if it does go out of style and I get sick of it, then I won't be so sad about it because I didn't spend like $7,000 like a Chanel bag on it. And I usually keep the chain tucked inside like so. And interior is in a really nice suede material in the nude color with one slip pocket. Again, it is a mini bag, but it does fit all my absolute essentials. So another amazing mini bag. Coming in at number nine is my beloved Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse in the monogram canvas. I was on a hunt for this bag for the longest time than when I almost gave up. I just went into the Rocks Boutique here in Sydney, met the nicest sales associate, Gigi, and she just happened to receive one that day. So I snapped it up. It was a bit of an impulse purchase, but it really wasn't. I did an unboxing video on this one and um, you can see how happy I was to actually find this bag, but it is really living up to my expectations. It is such a classic looking bag. It fits so much, it is so durable, and it is the perfect crossbody bag. This is actually the bag that I'm carrying at the moment. So I've got all my things in there. It is such a well thought out design. Love the look of it, love the functionality, and I just love love this monogram strap as well. It is adjustable and I just love the top handle as well. It is so cute to just hold like this. Totally in love with this bag and I feel so lucky to have found it in the store when I did. Coming in at number 10 is another Gucci bag and it is my Gucci Soho Disco bag in the color Rose Beige. I bought this before I had the Mamon mini bag and I didn't have any camera bags in my collection so I just wanted to try out the camera bag style. I bought this bag in Gucci store in Sydney I just fell in love with the color and that's the reason I bought this bag. It is the perfect beigey nude color and it goes with pretty much any outfit that you wear. And I usually keep this bag stuffed because it is a slouchy bag. It can lose its shape apparently. And I usually just keep the shoulder strap inside as well so it's not dangling everywhere absolutely love this tassel as well. Before I bought my puzzle bag, this was my go-to traveling bag for sizing and things like that. So definitely one of my favorites, really easy to wear, really lightweight and great for traveling and great for any colored outfit. Coming in at number 11 is my very first Chanel bag and it is my classic flap in the jumbo size in the caviar leather with gold hardware. I always knew that I wanted to have a Chanel classic handbag in my collection and I debated for the longest time which one to buy because I actually thought I'll only buy one and love it and be done with it. So with much consideration, I decided on the jumbo size in the black color because I thought it was the best value for money. There isn't a huge price difference between the medium and the jumbo and you get so much bag for the jumbo. I bought this bag five years ago for my birthday in the Sydney Westfield boutique. And after I bought this bag, I probably only used this bag straight for like two years because I was so proud to have a Chanel classic bag in my collection finally. So love this bag still to this day. But as you guys know, I have added a few other Chanel bags since this one. Guys, it's a slippery slope. You think that you're gonna get one bag and be done with it? It is never the case. You get a little bit addicted to it and I ended up buying a few more after this. So this bag doesn't get as much use anymore because I do have other Chanel bags that I do prefer to use that are more lightweight, that are easier to grab. But I'll always have this in my collection. It was such a monumental moment in my life because I was finally, you know, happy in my job. I was starting to earn a better income. So this bag just represents so much for me. Coming in at number 12 is my Chanel boy bag. This is the only boy bag in my collection. Mine is in the gray lambskin with the ruthenium hardware and it is in the size old medium. I picked this up 
about three years ago in Bondi, Westfield. So at this point, all my bags were the classic flaps or the mini flaps and I did want to add a boy bag to my collection. And when I saw this color, I just loved how well the Ruthenium hardware went with this gray color and this size is my favorite. And this is from 2017 Cuba collection. So I fell in love with the lining as well. It's got the beautiful khaki green and pale pink lining. So this is a little bit like my Givenchy Antigone handbag. So it is a more edgy, trendy looking bag. So those days that I want to add a bit of an edge to my outfit, I reach for this bag. Coming in at number 13 is my beloved Chanel reissue bag that I purchased only last year. And it is in the off-white color with the pale gold shiny hardware. I have fallen in love with the Chanel reissues for a couple of years now and I did contemplate getting the black with the gold hardware but because I've already got a few black bags with gold hardware I really couldn't justify adding another black Chanel bag so I've been really thinking about what color will be the perfect color for me to add in the reissue style. Then I saw this bag in the Castle Ray boutique here in Sydney and I just absolutely fell in love with this color. The chevron quilting and it is in the distressed calf leather. Again, I have a whole dedicated video on this bag, so I'll leave a link to that. And although I love this bag, the only reason I don't wear it as much is because it is such a light color bag with a high price tag that I am a little bit scared about color transfer. So I only wear this with lighter colored clothing. So yeah, that is the only reason this bag doesn't rank higher in my list, but nonetheless, absolutely love it. Coming in at number 14 is my Louis Vuitton Alma BB in the epi leather in the gorgeous Coquelicot color with silver hardware. I really love Louis Vuitton Epi leather because it is really understated, really durable, and it is an iconic leather for Louis Vuitton. At the point that I added this bag, I didn't have any pop of color bags in my collection. Everything was really neutral and boring colors. And so I really wanted to add a pop of color bag in my collection. Again, I just bought this at the Sydney Maison store on George Street. And I also got the Clochette Hot Stamped with my Korean name initial, E. And I just got that in the large letter in the silver to match the hardware of the bag. So a great pop of color bag in my collection. Coming in at number 15 is my Chanel rectangular mini in the color purple in the lambskin with the pale gold hardware. I did unbox this beauty on my channel. This was definitely an impulse purchase. I bought this last year, again at Bondi. I just saw this color, absolutely fell in love with the color and I always wanted to try out the rectangular mini style as well. I do have two square minis in my collection, which I love, but a lot of people rave about the rectangular mini that it fits more and it does look more classic. So I definitely wanted to try the rectangular mini. And when I saw this color, I just couldn't resist it. I definitely love the rectangular shape. It does make it a little bit easier to lay your items inside just kind of across. Because I love this color so much, I actually went out and bought some outfits just to go with this bag. So I bought a couple of Zimmerman pieces and also this tee goes really nicely with this color, but I really wanted to wear this bag as much as I can. So yeah, I've got a few dedicated outfits that look amazing with this bag. Next up is my Louis Vuitton Speedy in the classic size 30 without the bandolier in the Demia Ebin print. This was my very first designer handbag purchase seven years ago. I definitely don't use it as much anymore because I've got a lot of other handbags in my collection, but this was my only designer bag for the first couple of years and I used it to death and it has done me so well. It is a really good first designer handbag purchase because of it's good price point. At the time, it only retailed for about 800 Australian dollars, which I think is amazing price. Even now, it is a more reasonable price compared to a lot of other designer handbags. And it does look really nice during the day, fits in everything that you need. It's big enough as a work bag as well. And even in the evening, it does look really chic in my opinion. The color goes with everything. So a really good first designer handbag. And I'm so glad that I did grab it at the time. And it is completely weatherproof. Doesn't matter if you wear it in the rain you don't have to worry about watermarks because of the treated leather and we all know how durable Louis Vuitton coated canvas is so although I don't get as much use out of this bag anymore it'll always have a special spot in my heart Next up is my Miu Miu bag. I don't actually know what the style is called. I bought this about five years ago when the two-tone thing was really in. This blue color surprisingly goes with a lot of different outfits again. And I say that it is still on the more subtle understatement.
understated side. So before I added a lot of my other understated handbags, this used to be my go-to bag that I'd carry when I don't want to wear a really loud designer piece in my outfit. So it does have a little Miu Miu plate there, but it's very small. It also comes with an adjustable shoulder strap. So it is really handy, great travel bag. And on the back as well, it's got a slip pocket. This is my easy outfit bag. I just literally wear it so much when I want to just go easy and wear something really casual. So I don't really wear this bag for photo shoots or anything. And that's the only reason you haven't seen it. But nonetheless, it is a bag that I love in my collection. Next up is my Chanel Classic Medium Flap in the color Beige Clair with the gold hardware. And it is in the caviar leather. This is the second ever Chanel bag that I purchased. Again, in Sydney Westfield Boutique. This came very soon after my jumbo purchase. Like I said, it's a slippery slope. I got my jumbo, then I was already looking for my next one. This color used to be a classic color, but now it is seasonal, so it is a little bit harder to find. So I am so glad that I just went a bit crazy and bought this one as well. And being a medium size, it is a very classic looking bag. I don't get as much wear out of this one because this color is a pretty yellowy beige color. So sometimes it is pretty difficult to match with different outfits, but I do get a little bit more wear out of it now since I bought a couple of Chanel shoes that have the same yellow based beige color. So up until I bought those shoes, it was even more tricky to incorporate this color into my outfits. So not the most used bag, but I am fine with it because it is such a classic bag in such a classic color. I can carry this for many, many years to come. So I'm not too concerned about the wear that I'm getting because if I get to wear this bag into my 60s, 70s and 80s, even if I get to wear it a few times a year, I will get the cost per wear down. So really happy to have this in my collection. Next up is my Louis Vuitton Eva Clutch in the Demia Azure print with the Vachetta leather. It does come with a gold shoulder chain and it's got a longer shoulder strap in the Pichetta leather as well. I got this quite a few years ago when the price was only $600. Now it is discontinued, so I'm so glad to have this. I used to use this a lot more, but now that I have a few more clutch bags and a few more white colored bags, I don't get as much use out of this one as I used to, but I still love this bag. It is such a nice feminine design with a lot of nice details. Yeah, I definitely think that it is a really well-constructed bag. I just don't get as much use out of it, but absolutely stunning bag. Next up, I think it is the 20th bag now. It is my Valentino Glam Lock bag. I think they only come in two sizes, and this is the larger of the two sizes, and it is in the color Poudre with light gold hardware details. It again has a little push lock there to open the bag, and I usually store the shorter chain inside the bag, so the chain is completely detachable. It is a really nice shorter bag. I bought this bag to go with all of my Valentino Rockstar shoes. If you guys have been watching my videos, you know how much I love Valentino Rockstar shoes. I've got quite a few pairs and they all have this exact nude colored straps. This is my go-to evening fancy clutch bag. But based on usage, I don't get as much use out of this one because again, as you guys know, I don't have a lot of evening events to attend to. So that's the only reason why it is at the 20th place. So that is my only Valentino bag. Then coming in at number 21 is my speedy bandolier size 25 in the monogram canvas with the Vachetta leather. It is a nice functional little bag and again I used to get a lot of use out of this bag but since I purchased my Pochette Matisse in the same color combination with the monogram with the Vachetta leather, I have been leaning more towards using that one instead of this one. So I haven't really had a time that I picked this one over the other one recently. But before I had the Pochette Matisse, I used to use this bag a lot because it does come with a shoulder strap. You have the option of using the bag as a top handle bag, but you can attach the shoulder strap and wear it as a crossbody or shoulder bag. So yeah, I still enjoy having this in my collection but haven't been really using it as much in the past year or so. Coming in at number 22 is my Louis Vuitton Felici wallet on a chain. This is technically a wallet with a chain so it's not technically a handbag but I do use this as a handbag. I never use it as a wallet because it is a little bit big to use as a wallet but the reason why it is called a wallet is because it's got these two little inserts and it comes with a really lovely shorter chain as well. So it is a really nice evening bag and I love the color. It is in the Bernie leather in the color Amaranth but it just isn't ranking higher up in my list because again I don't have a lot of evening events so a really lovely piece 
but not one that I reach for as much. Next up is my Chanel Coco handle bag in the size small with black caviar leather, brushed gold hardware, and the beautiful burgundy lizard handle. I've done a whole dedicated review video on this because I think it is one of the best value Chanel handbags that you can get. It comes with all the features of a classic flap and more because it does have a top handle and exotic leather. Now Chanel I don't think is using exotic leather anymore, but you can still get these pieces on pre-loved websites and it does come with a shoulder strap that is detachable so again a very handy bag but I just don't get a lot of use out of it because it is a more serious mature looking bag in my opinion so when I try to put this with my outfit sometimes it just looks a little bit too serious so I haven't been using this bag as much as I like but again because it is a very classic bag I'm happy to keep it in my collection so in the years to come I know that I'm eventually going to get my cost per wear down so again a piece that I'm absolutely happy Happy to keep in my collection but currently not getting a lot of use. Next up is my Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse in the rose poudre color in the emprunt leather with gold hardware. I am so sad that this item is ranking so low. This bag actually signifies the beginning of my YouTube channel because the unboxing of this beauty was my first ever video and it is such a beautiful color but I think I was actually really wanting the monogram Pochette Matisse at the time that I bought this but I couldn't get it anywhere because of the stock levels and the high demand and when I saw this pink color I think I just settled for it and I did make an excuse for myself because I have the Gucci pink loafers that I thought I was gonna wear this bag with but I just haven't been reaching for this so although I love looking at it I need to make a decision whether I'm going to keep this or let it go so it's a bit of a tough one because I still think it is so beautiful but if I'm not using it I think I should let it go but I'm going to sit on it for a little bit longer so that I don't end up having seller's remorse. Next up is my Chloe Faye mini bag. It is in the brown leather with the suede flap and the hardware is very interesting. It has the light gold and the silver. Very interesting looking bag and a very stylish looking bag, but I just find this bag way too small. I did talk about this bag on my other video where I discussed most and least used items. When I first bought it, I didn't think it was too small and I I thought it would be similar to the Chanel mini flaps but it is way smaller once I put my iPhone 7 plus in there there's nothing really else that I can put in there so this was originally the bag that I bought to go with my Hermes Oran sandals but unfortunately way too small and I haven't gotten the use out of it now I have three more bags to show you they're the last three bags in my collection and I bought these bags very early on in my designer handbag buying years and I do actually unfortunately consider these regretful purchases because I didn't know too much about handbags and I didn't really do proper research. I just bought these bags because I liked them at the time, but I kind of regret purchasing these ones. I could have made better decisions but I still have them in my collection because if I sell them, I'm gonna get pennies for them. So it's just not worth selling them. So I'm keeping them in my collection, but I seriously never use them. So first out of the three bags that I never use is this Mulberry Base Water Bag in the tan color. I bought this six years ago in the Mulberry store in Sydney. It is really poorly wearing. The leather is very fragile. So I don't know if the scratches are showing up, but it is pretty beaten up. It's got structure loss as well, and if you have a look at the back side, you can see a few scratches. This bag unfortunately just looks really worn. It was my work bag for maybe two or three months, and it started looking like this and I'm just not the biggest fan and I also don't think it really suits my style and aesthetics so I definitely don't think it was a wise purchase for my own style so that is the first one of the three. The second out of the three is this Chanel bag. I don't even know what this style is called. It is a seasonal style from quite a few years back. I can't remember what year I bought it. It was actually a birthday present from my parents and they just asked me to pick a bag that I liked so I picked this one. At the time I was contemplating between this one and the Prada Safiano tote in the very similar cameo color I think it's called and I decided on this one because it is Chanel but my regret is that at the time I didn't have any classic flaps. Yeah so the jumper wasn't my very first bag that I purchased I actually forgot about this bag. I didn't even include this one in my Chanel handbag collection video. That's how little I use this. But my regret is that I wish that I actually just purchased a classic flap instead of this because the price difference wasn't 
massive. So this one was about $2,700 and I know that's still a lot of money, but these days you can't get a Chanel bag for that sort of price. And I think the classic flap was about 4,000 at the time. So I just wish that I would have just gone for the classic flap, but we live and learn. I like it, but this style is, I feel like a little bit outdated. I just don't think this was a very wise purchase. And then the final bag in my collection that I never use is the Gucci New Jackie bag. It has the beautiful deep purple leather trims and that classic Gucci canvas that is not the Gigi but it's the rhomboidal one. At the time, you know, the sales associate said this was the original Gucci print and it was very classic. But I've learned over these that Gucci items are very trendy and I probably got to use this bag for about six months and after that the hobo bag style really went out of fashion and I've never really reached for it afterwards. So yeah, I did get some use out of it but I don't think it was a very good purchase because at the time I paid 2,700 Australian dollars from my memory and there were so many other bags that were classic that would never go out of fashion for that price. I mean, back in 2012, you could have bought a really nice handbag with that money. So I definitely regret purchasing this one instead of a more classic style. So that is it for this video, guys. Let me know which bag was your favorite bag from my collection in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. As always, thank you so much for watching this video and spending some of your precious time with me today. And I can't wait to See you again soon in my next video. Bye guys. You're my bitter one taking me home. For one thing really do one. See that you don't wish, but it